Welcome back to The Factory, the first episode of 2022. A couple of episodes ago, Brenton was working on the Makerverse load cell ADC project. We were writing the PIO driver for that and just getting basically like a hello world reading out of the thing. Now that we can actually read data off this ADC, we can finally verify the design and verify the electrical engineering. Let's do it. So since the last time we've talked about the load cell amp, we've made a lot of progress. We've been putting a lot of work into minimizing the noise on the implementation we've got, and we've made a platform to weigh things on. Taking a step back before we started measuring things in grams, we were measuring things in the raw ADC values coming out of the load cell ADC. You can see a bunch of numbers floating on the screen now. These are the raw values which have had a zero point subtracted off. And what you can see is the noise in the ADC. This is just the random fluctuations due to thermal noise and electrical noise and everything else in the setup we've got here. So there's a non-trivial number of bits of noise. We're going plus or minus 128 roughly. So around seven bits of noise, something like that. Now we might be thinking, well, that's terrible. We're wasting seven bits of our 24 bits, but it actually turns out not to be too bad. I've run the numbers on this noise level that's coming out and with the current implementation, it's got what's called an effective number of bits of about 18 bits. So in the data sheet for this device, we've got an effective number of bits specification um, and for a reference voltage of five volts at 10 samples per second, it reckons 19.5 bits is about what you, you should be getting. Now we're getting 18, which is obviously lower than 19.5. And I think the major reason for that is that we're using a reference voltage of only 2.5 volts. The whole point of using 2.5 volts is so we can run it off a 3.3 volt microcontroller uh, without having a special power supply for the whole load cell assembly. So we're probably losing about one bit in the fact that we're using a 2.5 volt reference and the data sheet spec is for a five volt reference. There's also going to be some extra noise from having a load cell connected and having electrical noise in the room and so forth. Uh, and we're also powering this from the USB socket on a PC. I dare say their lab measurements had a nice clean power supply <laughs> that was probably a bit better than a USB port. Very much a practical measurement. So when trying to minimize the noise being seen by the low cell ADC, the first thing I started doing was try to play with this decoupling capacitor that sits on the output of the reference. I was thinking 100 nanofarads might be a good place to start. 100 nanofarads goes everywhere. So that's what got installed on the first prototype. And it turned out that it was actually complete rubbish. <laughs> there was a lot of oscillation in the reference because that 100 nanofarad load capacitance actually drove the reference into oscillation. Yeah, you might be thinking, why is there oscillation when it's just a xenodiode? Well, it's not just a xenodiode. There's actually a xenodiode reference and an op amp inside this reference. And the whole point of the op amp is so you can actually have reference voltages that are different from 2.5 volts. You can put some feedback resistors in there to get, say, a 10 volt reference or a 5 volt reference or whatever. Um, so this load capacitance can actually drive that op amp into oscillation. So if we look closely at the data sheet for our reference, we'll find this plot called stability boundary conditions versus load capacitance. Turns out that at 100 nanofarads load capacitance, it's about as unstable as the chip is ever going to be. Um, and if we actually plug in 100 nanofarad load capacitance, we can see that we get about 100 millivolt peak to peak oscillations on the output. So we've got this periodic noise that's on the output of the reference that's going into the input reference on the ADC. And because the ADC is presumably a Sigma Delta architecture, it's sampling really, really, really fast. And that sampling is completely uncorrelated with the oscillation. So it's basically just manifesting itself as wideband noise. Yeah, in this plot, we have this instability region underneath the curve. I kind of guessed that it's not labeled here, but it says that at 15 volts, there's no oscillation. And as we go up here um, on these lines, we get more and more oscillation. Um, and so the solution is either to put lots and lots of current through this reference and just make it really warm, basically just waste energy. Uh, or we put a very large capacitance on the output or put a very low capacitance on the output. Basically, I did lots of tests with a 10 microfarad capacitor and a bunch of tests with no capacitor there at all. And the tests with no capacitor were actually slightly better <laughs> than the test with the 10 mic. And that's that's all because this isn't like a simple xenodiode. So when you, so when you come across voltage references, you've got to be careful whether you're holding a xenodiode or some like more integrated device. Yeah, yeah. It's basically just a problem because we've got an op amp with a xenodiode somewhere uh, as a reference. So let's have a quick look at what the actual difference in measurements is with and without this capacitance. So in Thony, we've got a bunch of data coming down. We've got a peak to peak amplitude of the data of something around one to 2000. And we've got the capacitance in there. If we remove the capacitance, almost instantly, 
that data becomes much, much cleaner. We now see that we've got a peak to peak amplitude of something around 100 to 200 counts. It's almost a tenth of the noise that we had before. Yeah, so we've got these ADC values and we want a number in grams or kilograms or whatever. Um, basically, the only way we can do this is by comparing the output from this with a known reference. Now, we don't happen to have any weight references in the building, but we do have a second set of scales instead of commercial scales. So just use my water bottle as a weight reference. We can weigh this using this set of scales here and we get um, some numbers out. We're sitting at about 860,000, give or take. Then we can weigh this on the commercial scales and calculate a number of least significant bits per gram. Don't drink it. No, don't drink, don't drink the calibrated weight. <laughs> <laughs> Once we've done our very crude one data point calibration, this is the number that I got out. It was 8.9 times 10 to the minus four least significant bits per gram. If we run this code instead, we can now take our weight calibration and put it on the scales and see that it weighs about 760 grams. So, you know, we've got one milligram-ish per least significant bit, and with the noise, we end up with about 0.1 grams of uh, usable resolution if you let it average out a little bit. If you've got as much time as you want to take a really precise measurement, the limiting factor would be the long-term stability of this equipment. So basically we're talking about things like thermal drift and silicon aging if you're talking about weeks and months time scales. So put it in a temperature stable environment, let it sit there for a few hours, then put the, the, the thing you want to measure on there, then take measurements for minutes or hours and then take an average. Sure, in theory, you could get a more precise measurement, but it's 0.1 grams. Like, <laughs> we're not measuring yeah, dosages of medication on this yeah, thing. Like, at this point, I don't know if it's possible to give this number to everyone. Um, I don't know how much variation there is between load cells and how much variation there is between ADCs. I, I don't want to make promises until we've got 50 load cells and 50 load cell ADCs and we can go and get some estimate of what the variability is. So to actually test just the ADC board, I don't think we really actually need a real load cell and a calibration weight and any of that stuff. All we really need is some sort of dummy voltage divider and a bunch of measurements to see if the actual device under test has a low enough noise floor to, for us to be happy with it. So on the actual test jig here, we've got our pogo pins here to plug the device under test, and we've just got a whetstone bridge, basically just a full bridge there made out of 1K resistors. And we're just using that fake whetstone bridge as some input, some dummy input for the load cell ADC, taking a bunch of measurements and making sure that the noise on those measurements is low enough. There we go. So this one's only saying about 15 enol. Yeah. This what? one's got an oscillating um, reference on it. It's got an early prototype with 100 nanofarad cap, and the noise is just too big on this one. So you have it, a bit of a deep dive into vetting what is a pretty simple electrical design, but I guess that's the beauty of it, is the simpler you make it, the more reliable it can be. And so who would have thought that just removing a decoupling capacitor would actually make this design more stable. That was quite surprising for me. If you like what we do on the factory or if you just want to see something a little bit closer, let us know on the Core Electronics forums. Until next time, thanks for watching. So we're not like just massively exceeding the rating of this load cell. Like I'm going to repeatedly put like 300% of rated load on that and we're at zero. Wow. Like, so we're back down to that same noise floor. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a one kilo load. So I guess they have to be, they have to be like kind of over spec for like shock loading and stuff. Right. right. You'd imagine that, but that, that's, that's not a shock. That's, that's not a knife. There we go. Five kilos. Six, seven kilos. Seven kilos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's dope. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like you, it's almost like there's a bit of positive bias in that reading. Yeah, there's a, there's 0.1 grams of bias in it now. Like, when but that was you a, like stretch it out to minus six kilograms. I'm probably going to snap the perspex before I get there. It's about the. It seems like it's at about the same point. Like it was around yeah. point negative point. We're also not 10. talking about not compensating for thermal drift. I'm looking at this design, and it seems to me like it should matter where you put your weight on this, but it doesn't seem to. Like where, where you put that battery on the scale, it doesn't matter if you put it here or if you put it here, it still reads the same measurement, which is kind of counterintuitive because the bar is supported on the right side and it's holding the top plate on the left side. So I guess, I guess these, this, this is just the design use case for these kind of load cells. Like they, they're 
they only bend in this one axis. So it doesn't matter if you load it here or here or here or here. It's still like the, just the way that this is drilled out and the way the measurements are taken. It's still just a vertical force. Yeah, yeah. Look, this is beyond my formal training, but it does seem that it's very resistive to pure torque, for example. So putting torque on it over here or over here or in the middle um, is not going to change the downward force measurement. Can we try that with your water bottle? Yeah, uh, yes. I mean, I guess we could kind of like... It's a little bit unbalanced, but we can go from here. We've got 766, and at the other end... We've got seven, okay, it's about one gram of error. Maybe, maybe actually, half a gram of error. I actually saw the whole thing like yeah, lift up. Look, this is, this is getting a little bit unbalanced. <laughs> um, if we try and put this on the left side, I'm going to, it's going to tip over. There we go. Well, that's 766 again, just. Oh, well, there you have it. And going the other way. Yeah, it really just doesn't seem to matter where you put so the... Uh, put the weight under test. So that's literally all it takes. You just need two plates bolted to either side of this bar. You need a Z shape. Or the, the, I guess the last thing, which is probably a little bit optional, I'm just gonna crumb out, um, would be linearity. Like if we've got this battery, we've got 21.8 grams. Right. And if we put the drink bottle and, if we put the drink bottle and then reset, re-zero, just by rerunning the script. Just re right? the script. The script does a zero. You know, it's a very okay. crude zero. A single data point zero. That's you good know, enough. we're engineers, not scientists. Twenty one point six ish. Yeah. Twenty one point seven. So, and that drink bottle was like nearly eight hundred grams. Yeah, it's almost at the rating of the load cell. That's great.